hosted by the Incarceration Festival. Gee, we're in the music industry. We have to believe in the unexplainable. <laughs> Welcome inside the dilapidated gates of the Mansfield Reformatory in Ohio. My name is Josh Bernstein, and in this chilling series, I take famous rock stars into the most haunted and decrepit dungeons in the world. What's your name? <laughs> Step beyond the realm of the living into the darkest corridors of the dead. Join us as we find out there is no redemption and certainly no escape oh. from the paranormal prison. Get ready to unleash your inner rebel at the Incarceration Festival, hosted within the haunted walls of the Ohio State Reformatory. Brace yourself for a music and tattoo experience like no other. As fans experience world-class rock and metal acts igniting the stage, the pulse of the crowd reverberates through the very prison that once held history's most notorious criminals. As the echoes of guitar riffs intertwine with the buzz of tattoo needles, Incarceration, where music, art, and history collide in an unforgettable symphony of destruction. On this very special episode of Paranormal Prison, Megadeth. Formed in 1983 by guitarist and vocalist Dave Mustaine, Megadeth is one of the mightiest pillars in the thrash metal genre. With a string of iconic albums like Peace Sells, But Who's Buying, and Rust in Peace, Megadeth have defined the heavy metal landscape. Megadeth's intense technical musicianship, coupled with Mustaine's distinctive growl and thought-provoking lyrics, have earned them a dedicated global fan base. Known for their anti-establishment stance, Megadeth continues to be a driving force in metal standing tall as one of the big four alongside metal giants Metallica, Slayer, and Anthrax. Well, it's better that we find the ghosts instead of them find us. Yeah. I think by the nature of it, there's so much discontent in here that if it's possible, this would be the place. For this investigation, we take Megadeth to where maximum security prisoners were housed, the attic. This stifling hot attic once held some of the most violent offenders in Ohio penal history. So you see, that's the, old, that's the old warden's office in there. That's where they're doing the tattoo convention. After climbing five flights and entering the private attic area, we are now ready to use our official spirit boxes. Is anyone here with us? I Who is that? Can you say hello again? We make our first contact. Is this spirit welcoming us as we search for electronic voice phenomena? Do you want to tell us your name? Yeah. Tell us your name. What's your name? <laughs> wow. Now we have two separate voices coming through the spirit box. We hear the names Ian and Brian. Were Ian and Brian two of the lost souls and spirits who died at the hands of their fellow inmates? Me, myself, I've had what I believe are visitations in sleep, but uh, you know, when, as far as out-of-body experiences or seeing any apparitions or stuff like that, you know, how much of it is just a little too much ganja back when you were doing that stuff, and maybe, maybe it's real. In the heart of confinement, the paranormal awakens. This is Paranormal Prison, where spirits serve time. <laughs> we head further into the attic and into the antiquated air circulation system where we're about to uncover some of the most compelling evidence yet. So, so check this out, Dave. This is 
these giant wheels would turn and scoop up air from the basement. Oh wow! And this is this was like sort of a you know an ancient. Uh, there's, there's a wheel on this side as well. Um, and this is how the air would come up here. You see that, guys? It'd scoop it up. Okay. Wow. Big old wheels scooping stuff like a windmill. Like, like, a, like a water wheel. Here. Even though we climbed up that many flights, we're still, you know, nowhere near the. Oh, yeah. Dave, do you have a question for the, for the spirit box? Are you here with us? You're not here with us. We're unsure if the spirit is responding to Dave's questions or if Dave's mere presence has somehow upset the spirits trapped in the darkest depths of this prison. What's your name? What is your name? It's now clear as day that Dave has some kind of adverse effect on these spirits. We are clearly able to decipher a voice saying, get away from me. The question now is, why? What's your name? Something is trying to speak through multiple sound waves, but it almost sounds like there's something else preventing it from communicating to us. The name of Jesus compels you to say your name. The words, come on, challenge Dave as he tries to provoke these spirits with a religiously sealed phrase. Does it want Dave to try to continue? Do you do it? Does Satan know your name? After waiting in anticipation, we're unable to receive any more contact. Thankfully, we're able to sit with the band just one more time after their intensive investigation. Is there any particular point for you that really hit home or... Uh... You mean besides the conversation with the ghosts upstairs? It was very enlightening. Yeah, I think it was great. The story behind it was really neat. Looking at all the dates, too, um, just imagining the history here, because, you know, we've all seen the movie, and, and well, most of us have, and, and uh, just that alone is cool, just the connection that way. But the, the eeriness of being in this building and knowing how many people have lived and died here and, and people that belonged here and people that were wrongfully incarcerated, you know, it's just it's, it's incredible.